Carl Jung said, If we understand anything of the unconscious, we know that it cannot be swallowed. We also know that it is dangerous to suppress it, because the unconscious is life, and this life turns against us if suppressed, as happens in neurosis. Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life, and you will call it fate. By making the unconscious conscious, we are empowered to bring about change in our lives. How do we do this? Through reflection, meditation, mindfulness, hypnosis, and dream analysis. The central focus of Jungian psychology is to make the unconscious conscious. Why? Because we can integrate what we learn in the unconscious into the conscious personality. The parts of ourselves that are unconscious that can hold us back are part of the shadow self. The shadow is the side of your personality that contains the part of yourself that you don't want to face and admit is there. It's buried in the subconscious mind. Most people shy away from confronting these parts of themselves that lurk in the shadows because it's uncomfortable for us to face our flaws and failings. These represent the hidden side of our human psyche, but until we do face them, they can continue to exert a negative influence over our lives. They can pull us into the same harmful situations over and over again and attract the same toxic relationships. It is not fate that is the cause of this. Rather, because the universe is mental, we act unconsciously to create our reality. If we have negative energy around us and surround ourselves with negative and toxic people, we will experience more negativity. If we deal with the shadow self, on the other hand, we can learn what drives us subconsciously and begin to address our issues and heal ourselves. We want to become self-aware and we have to be, want to become self-aware and be willing to delve into the shadow self in order to truly heal. We repress the shadow into our subconscious because we believe these qualities will be unacceptable to our families, peers, and society. Subconsciously, we fear we will be rejected if these parts of our psyche are revealed. We do not want to look within because we're afraid of what we might discover. Society has so many ways of keeping us distracted and busy so that we don't accomplish any self-reflection. Society also does not value the skill of inner reflection, and few know how to do it very well. I know from personal experience, it is not taught at all to students in school. One of the tools we can use to help us cultivate a sense of self-awareness is lucid dreaming. What is meant by the term lucid dream? The definition of lucid dream is a dream during which the dreamer, while dreaming, is aware that they are dreaming. During the dream, they know the events happening aren't real, even though they feel very real. What happens in the brain during lucid dreaming? One of the changes that takes place is that the frontal lobe of the brain shows a higher level of activation. This is the part of our brain that controls our higher cognitive abilities. During normal dreaming, this area is inhibited. Another change that takes place is an increase in gamma waves, and gamma waves are associated with higher brain functions like cognition and memory. Lucid dreaming typically occurs during rapid eye movement sleep. This is a period of sleep we enter about 90 minutes after falling asleep, and it lasts about 10 minutes. As we sleep, each REM period is longer than the one before, and the last period can last up to an hour. For some people, lucid dreaming occurs spontaneously, but others can train themselves to lucid dream or to become better at it. During a lucid dream, the dreamer can control the narrative and change the way things are happening in the dream if they so desire. It's kind of like directing a movie in your sleep. Lucid dream can be very therapeutic. It can address nightmares, especially those that are recurring. If you can learn to lucid dream, you can gain the ability to exert control over your nightmares. It can help people who have phobias to address their fears. It's like doing exposure therapy because the dream world presents the possibility of experiencing a phobia without actually having to face it in the real world. What are some techniques for entering the lucid dream state? A study conducted in 2017 focused upon three common techniques. These are reality testing, 
Waking Back to Bed, or WBTB, and the mnemonic induction of lucid dreams, or the MILE technique. The reality testing method involves habitually asking yourself while awake whether you're dreaming, and then performing an action that helps you to find out. For example, throughout the day you can repeatedly ask yourself, am I dreaming right now? As you try to make your hand pass through a solid wall. In real life, obviously, the wall will not be penetrable, but in the dream, the hand will easily pass through it. Repeated checks throughout the day can make it more likely that a person will do the same checks while dreaming, which will allow the person to gain awareness of the dream. The second technique is called waking back to bed. This involves setting an alarm to wake up about five to six hours after going to sleep. Then, when you awake, you should remain awake for a while before going back to sleep. The idea is to propel you back into REM sleep, and of course, this is the cycle of sleep that is most likely to produce lucid dreaming. The brief awakening can increase cortical activation in the area of the brain that is involved with lucid dreaming. The mnemonic induction lucid dream, or MILE technique, involves rehearsing a dream and visualizing becoming lucid. In concert with this, you can express an intention right before going to bed, and this can also be performed during the stage of returning to sleep during the wake-back-to-bed technique. According to lucid dream researcher Stephen LaBerge, Mild is based on nothing more complex or esoteric than our ability to remember that there are actions we wish to perform in the future. Aside from writing ourselves memos, we do this by forming a mental connection between what we want to do and the future circumstances in which we intend to do it. Making this connection is greatly facilitated by the mnemonic device, the memory aid of visualizing yourself doing what it is you intend to remember. It's also helpful to verbalize the intention. When such and such happens, I want to remember to do so-and-so. So for example, when I pass the bank, I want to remember to draw out some cash. The verbalization that he suggests using to organize the intended effort is, next time I'm dreaming, I want to remember to recognize I'm dreaming. The when and what of the intended action must be clearly specified. LaBerge says it is important to generate this intention either immediately after awakening from an earlier REM period or following a period of full wakefulness. And an important point is that in order to produce the desired effect, it's necessary to do more than just mindlessly recite the phrase. You have to really intend to want to have a lucid dream. And here is his recommended procedure spelled out step by step. 1. During the early morning, when you awaken spontaneously from a dream, go over the dream several times until you've memorized it. 2. Then while lying in bed and returning to sleep, say to yourself, next time I'm dreaming, I want to remember to recognize I'm dreaming. 3. Visualize yourself as being back in the dream you just rehearsed, only this time see yourself realizing that you are in fact dreaming. And four, repeat steps two and three until you feel your intention is clearly fixed or you fall asleep. Other techniques for lucid dreaming include keeping a dream journal, practicing mindfulness and meditation, and hypnosis. If you choose to keep a dream journal, you should record the dreams you have each night in as much detail as possible. The practice of mindfulness and meditation can help train you to become more self-aware and present in the moment. And then in turn, this will help you to be more awake during the day, with the result that you are more likely to notice that you're dreaming while you are asleep. Hypnosis is another tool that can be used to aid in the practice of lucid dreaming. Lucid dream hypnosis relaxes your body and mind. This will help you to let go and allow your subconscious mind to guide your dreams. During a hypnosis session, your mind will receive deep hypnotic suggestions that will allow you to manipulate your dreams and take control of them in order to create positive change in your life. And very shortly, I will be posting a hypnosis session that I created for the purpose of stimulated, stimulating lucid dreaming.